Hi folks, I thought we'd uh, spend a few minutes talking about chapters 14 and 15 of The Scarlet Letter. This one's going to be kind of short because, uh, not to discount the chapters at all, but I kind of view 14 and 15 as these quick transitional chapters that really take us from the, the moment in chapter 12 when Dimsdale, Hester, and Pearl form an electric chain on the, on the scaffold and the meteor shower, and then the changing of Hester's uh, letter, meaning it's going to take us to what I would call a point of reckoning. So uh, just a couple of things go on. And the big picture of it, 14 and 15 kind of go together as the confrontation between Hester and Shillingworth. If you remember back in chapter 7, and eight, Hester had the confrontation with Dimsdale, where she kind of laid down the law and said, you will not take this child from me, threatening Dimsdale to, about revealing his identity. Well, this is kind of parallel to that, as she's going to encounter Chillingworth and do the same thing, more or less. Just say, it's time. I'm tired of keeping your secret. I'm going to tell. And in doing so, it reveals other truths. So uh, the chapter opens with uh, Chillingworth, or chapter 14 opens with Chillingworth uh, collecting herbs and Hester and Pearl see him down by the water. And then um, he greets them with a kind of innocuous good tidings. But there's clearly, as the narrator describes it, an awkward insincerity in both of their reaction to one another. There, there seems to be this rising tension that wasn't there back in chapter four when they met in in the prison cell. It just seems like Hester's distrust of Chillingworth and her understanding that Chillingworth is behind the man she loves, Dimsdale, suffering is really starting to eat away at her. In fact, uh, Hester is just taken by what the narrator calls D Chillingworth's fall and his now presence as the living embodiment of evil. He's a shell of the man she used to know and has become this kind of de perfect demonic creature. And then Hester um, and he start talking and Hester's like, you know what? I'm not dealing with it anymore. She says, I'm going to tell the minister and everybody else who you really are. And with this threat, it becomes an adversarial uh, relationship between Chillingworth and Dimsdale. He tries to backtrack and, and convince her not to, but she is not, uh, not kind of biting on that. So this kind of confrontation reveals two things. First, Chillingworth is now absolutely convinced that Dimsdale is the father. If he wasn't already, this kind of confirms it. And second, Dimsdale challenges her to let the black flower blossom as it may. In other words, it's he's saying, you do what you have to do, but I will do what I have to do. And we'll see the chips, we'll let the chips fall where they may, or we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I'll win this. In other words, it becomes this me versus you for the soul of Dimsdale battle that kind of erupts out of all of this. And 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 then he says at the at the way, now go thy ways and deal as thou wilt with yonder man. So that's that's him saying, let the black flower blossom and you go and do what you will with Dimsdale. If you want to tell him, tell him, but I'm going to do what I have to do with Dimsdale. And if that means him dying, if that means him suffering, so be it but it's you versus me now. Okay, so um, as we move on through, we now shift and Chillingworth has left and and Hester is watching. And it, it's interesting how he she points out the footsteps of Chillingworth actually kill the grass that he steps on. So again, pointing out him being the living embodiment of evil, walking death, and the man who steals souls of everything, as even the grass wilts in his footsteps. Truly a sinister character. And then Hester looks at him, and her cheeks become rosy red, and she says, Be it a sin or not, I hate 
that man. And then Hester stops for a moment and realizes this is, in fact, her first and true sin. She doesn't view the letter as a sin at all because she loves Dimsdale. Her sin is being associated with this sinister man and hating him and allowing him to let that seed of hate fester in her. Meanwhile, Pearl is down playing by the tide pools by the water, and she has picked up eelgrass, which uh, in modern language would be seaweed, um, and the eelgrass is green. And then she makes a letter A out of the green uh, seagrass and turns to Hester and says, look at my letter. And Hester is thrown by this because she doesn't want Pearl to have to deal with the same stigma that she's dealt with her entire life. But notice a couple of things. First, um, a daughter trying to be like her mother without any real knowledge of the sin attached to it uh, and probably being too young to fully understand. So that's why Hester decides not to tell her the truth at the end of the chapter. And second, notice the color green. Green usually symbolizes envy for somebody else and this is kind of symbolic of the natural inclination. Again, it comes from nature. The natural inclination for Pearl to envy her mother and want the letter just like her mother has. Now, keep this in the back of your mind because this is a significant line in chapter 16. And when we read 16 to 19, we're going to do it as a clump. And you're going to see this is a major part of it. Okay, so, and then... As the chapter comes to a close, we get a sense that Hester is planning to meet with Dimsdale. It, it, it's time to tell him the truth, and Pearl starts questioning about Dimsdale and starts questioning in an odd manner. Why is that man always holding his hand over his heart? And she kind of mimics him or mocks him for holding his hand over his heart, and Hester is kind of thrown by this question. But... Uh, the chapter comes to kind of a, a quick close as she now heads out for a chance a chance meeting. She's planning this chance meeting with Dimsdale, and it's time for her to um, to reveal the truth and to figure out what their next course of action is going to be. So we've transitioned from this climactic moment on the scaffold to now a an encounter that's going to happen that's going to lead us in full charge towards the conclusion of our story